And my name is Michael Branson. I'm a writer and teacher, and we're standing in the exhibition David Smith, Cubes and Anarchy at the Whitney Museum of American Art. There's an attitude in this work. Uh, there's a particular way in which it moves. There's a particular way, there's a particular gregariousness, uh, a kind of exuberance that this work has a way in which it meets the world, which was an important idea for him, even to think about how does art, how does art meet the world. He looked at a lot of art. Uh, he was interested in, in African art and uh, oceanic art and Mexican art and certainly Egyptian art. But there is this question of if you're going to make monumental sculpture in the second half of the 20th century, uh, you know, after two world wars and, uh, and a depression and after um, so much has actually been thrown into question, how can you do that? I think that there's a, there's a way um, in which when you look at the Cubis, there's a way in which their monumentality seems unstable or anxious or insecure. The Cubi one behind you where you've got this construction of cubic diamond forms and, and on the bottom of it you've got this little disc and whether it's actually held up by that disc I don't know but I suspect it does have some, some structural necessity to it but I think the, the fact that nevertheless you've got this little disc on the bottom that seems to be holding up this, this endless column that goes up and up and up it's absurd in a sense if you look at the uh, the cube by back there, and you've got the uni wheel, right? So you've got you've got you've got not just the barbells in the imagery, the sort of ludicrously large barbells, but then you've got the single wheel, and you've got the there's almost like a Laurel and Hardy aspect to it. And then with that zig, you've got the uh, this massive complex of steel forms resting upon this tiny little dolly with four wheels, and there's which makes me think of of these, you know, the cars in the, in, in the, sorry, the little cars and they, <laughs> that stop and then three, two or three giants get out of the car. But I also, so there's, a, there's an element of, of, of play and of entertainment uh, within this framework of performativity that we're talking about. But I think this sense of consequence, these are not, these are not trivial works, no matter how much play there is in them, and there's a lot at the same time, these are completely embedded in a, in, in, in a vision of sculpture and, and a vision of what sculpture can do in the world that are, that are profoundly serious.